Good morning and welcome to worship this morning. Uh, we're glad that you are joining with us as we uh, continue with the sermon series, Unraveled, Seeking uh, God When Our Plans Fall Apart. And today we're going to talk about our patterns, our plans, and how we uh, create and frame our lives and what happens when that starts to unravel. So we're glad that you're here and we invite you to enter in um, as you feel comfortable throughout this service. We begin our worship this morning with confession and forgiveness. And I invite you, if you have downloaded the PDF of today's service, to grab that. If you haven't, press pause. Uh, go and find the PDF on our Facebook page or website and pull that up so you can follow along and be fully a part of today's service. Let us begin with confession. In a world that is being unraveled before our eyes, let us turn to the God who knit us into being and weaves us together, confessing our frayed brokenness. God of creation, humanity is capable of such evil. Stories in scripture alongside stories on the news remind us of that truth all the time. For the moments when we choose violence over peace, exclusion over inclusion, and fear over hope, forgive us. When we choose pride over what is right and comfort over justice, show us mercy. When we numb our pain instead of leaning into empathy, unravel us, for we long to be changed. Amen. Hear the good news. Your sins are forgiven you are washed clean live this new life amidst the strands amidst the threads knowing knowing that the one who brought this whole world into being is still at work bringing forth the new creation we are a part of in christ amen here's hymn 807 come thou fount of every blessing you to join me as we pray the prayer of the day creating God we turn to you this day and recognize our continuous attempts at sustaining our patterns and holding fast to the practices that keep us comfortable safe and unchallenged yet you are a God who has come to save the lost help us this day and every day 
to let go of the ball of thread we hold fast to, to let the threads unravel, and to open ourselves to your new creation, your new patterns, indeed the new life you call us into. We ask this in the name of the one who came to earth, unraveling the illusion that we've got this under control. Amen. A reading from the book of Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it, because its wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish. He went down to Joppa, where he found a ship bound for that port. After paying the fare, he went aboard and sailed for Tarshish to flee from the Lord. Then the Lord sent a great wind on the sea, and such a violent storm arose that the ship threatened to break up. Then they took Jonah and threw him overboard, and the raging sea grew calm. At this the men greatly feared the Lord, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows to him. Now the Lord provided a huge fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. From inside the fish, Jonah prayed to the Lord his God. He said, In my distress I called to the Lord, and he answered me. From deep in the realm of the dead I called for help, and you listened to my cry. You hurled me into the depths, into the very heart of the seas, and the currents swirled about me. All your waves and breakers swept over me. I said, I have been banished from your sight, yet I will look again toward your holy temple. The engulfing waters threatened me. The deep surrounded me. Seaweed was wrapped around my head. To the roots of the mountains I sank down. The earth beneath barred me in forever. But you, Lord my God, brought my life up from the pit. When my life was ebbing away, I remembered you, Lord, and my prayer rose to you, to your holy temple. Those who cling to worthless idols turn away from God's love for them. But I, with shouts of grateful praise, will sacrifice to you. What I have vowed I will make good. I will say, salvation comes from the Lord. And the Lord commanded the fish, and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. A reading from the 19th chapter of Luke. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Many of us had a plan. Some of us working out that plan for many years, and others are just beginning or somewhere in the middle. We have been planning and educating and working and saving and doing, hitting a bump and getting up again, and just seeking to get or keep the plan moving. We have grown accustomed to the pattern or are longing to see the pattern, to live the pattern that we see others living. These patterns help us know who we are in this world and that indeed we are doing things the right way. But what happens when all of that begins to unravel? When the plan no longer works, when the patterns that keep us comfortable and on solid footing unravel and the ground beneath becomes unstable. This has been my life, and in conversations I know many of your lives as well, since mid-March. Although if we've been paying attention, I think most of us could look further back and see 
when patterns of our lives all neatly rolled up in a ball begin to loosen and unroll. Think about this image for a second. When you wind a ball of yarn together, you keep it tight and you fully encircle it all the way until you get to the end of the thread. And then you have two choices. To tie this end after you get it situated on the ball as tight as you can so it holds fast and will not move. Or you let the ball unroll, loosen naturally, knowing that unraveling will lead to more raveling and rolling in the future. Especially when we place it down and end up kicking it across the room or even worse, when we're trying so hard to keep it tightened and we drop the ball and the thread unravels, maybe rolls across the room or down the stairs, it all unwinds. This is the image that I have been playing with for the past few weeks. Maybe it's too much of the fabric strips and the yarn that we've been using on our prayer wheel, all scattered throughout my home office space. Or, or maybe it's the fear and trepidation that I experience when opening the newspaper, turning on the TV, talking to a friend of Brishner, or simply opening my email. It seems that all aspects of our lives are loosening, if not unraveling entirely. And this causes fear of loss of control disorganized life, a challenge of what we thought mattered, who we thought we were, and uncertainty about where we are going. Like Zacchaeus, who was doing his job as a tax collector, and he heard about this man, Jesus, who was about to come through town, and he was coming down the street, and he paused his work to go and see. But he was short. And so he did what he undoubtedly had had to learn to do throughout his life in order to see above those who were taller, who were standing in front of him, or who pushed him aside. He had to accommodate. And so he climbed a tree just to see for himself. It was a normal pattern of life, work, learning to provide for himself and his family in any way possible. Climbing the tree was part of the pattern, but he didn't expect the next piece. When Jesus called him to hurry down, hurry down, and said he would be staying at his place, he had to have been thinking, what, me? What, what, why would you pick me? And yet we read that he scrambled down that tree happily welcoming Jesus into his home. That could have been the end of the story. Jesus calling someone who had to make accommodations for himself. But it's not, because none of our stories are that simple. This is just the beginning. When the threads of Zacchaeus's life begin to unravel. You see, even back then, people weren't too fond of tax collectors. Many tax collectors would often add amounts to the sums owed and pocket it themselves as they were middlemen, if you will, in this process. So when people saw that Jesus invited himself into this man's house, this tax collector's house, and this man welcomed him robustly, they were not too happy. And the text reads, they grumbled. This man was not earning the respect, their respect. He wasn't earning their respect. He, he likely thought he would earn by welcoming Jesus into his home. On the contrary, the scorn and suspicion of him 
and indeed of Jesus, grew. But something stirred for Zacchaeus in this experience, and he was moved to confession and repentance, committing to giving half of his possessions to the poor. And, and if he had defrauded anyone, he would give four times that amount back to the said persons. So not only were the strands of his life unraveling, but he was actively engaged in helping them spiral, helping it become loose in his life. And you heard what Jesus proclaimed to him, didn't you? Today, salvation has come to this house. Because he too is a son of Abraham, for the son of man came to seek out and save the lost. What good news that is. Zacchaeus was lost, caught in a system of the world that told him he had to seek out for himself. He had to do what he had to do to get himself ahead and above. Jesus doesn't say to Zacchaeus, you just don't stand a chance. You built your bed, now lie in it, continue on. No, he says salvation has come today because I have come to save the lost and you You have realized that what you have always knew and who you have become, what your ball of yarn looks like, is not who you are, nor who God is calling you to be. Zacchaeus let go of that ball of yarn, and he let it unravel, waiting to see what new life, new pattern God was calling him into. And he actively took steps into that new life. So I look at this ball of yarn. And I ask myself if I'm ready to let it go. To let go of trying to stay in control. Of trying to keep my pattern tight. Of seeking to be who I have planned to be. And in that question, I hear Jesus saying, come to me and live the salvation that is yours. Live into the pattern that I have invited you into. A pattern that is not created for those who have everything together, <clears throat> but for those who think they do. Who live under an illusion of control. Or at least pretend that the life we thought we were living was solid. Our governmental systems are unraveling. Our educational systems are unraveling. Our healthcare systems are unraveling. Our close your eyes and pretend that everyone is treated equal, social structures, are unraveling. Our financial systems are unraveling. Our church institution and faith patterns are unraveling. And Jesus says, let them. Let them unravel. Because in that unraveling, the newness of the life that I have promised, the salvation that I come to bring into this world is coming, is here today. Trust me. Live into the promise. Let the strands fall to the ground. Let the ball roll down those stairs. Like Zacchaeus calling Jesus, Jesus is calling us to come down, to invite him fully into our homes, into our lives, into our world. And to let go of the control we thought we had. To release the patterns and the plans that we have set and to trust him. 
and in that trust, in that release, we will be able to fully embrace and live into the salvation that we are gifted with today, now. Jesus doesn't promise Zacchaeus that things will be easy, that, that new patterns or practices will emerge quickly. And he doesn't promise that to us either. What he does say is trust me. Let me be the savior and the guide and live into the life that I have given you. <clears throat> New patterns will emerge. New strands of life will be woven together. New systems and structures will be constructed. We need to let go of the strand that we are holding. We need to come out of our trees as bystanders, as onlookers. And we need to live the life that God has called us into. A life of love a life of justice, a life of peace, a new life, God's new life for us and for this whole world. Amen. Here's hymn 798, Will You Come and Follow Me? Now let us join together in professing our faith in the one who calls us to let go and to follow and trust, using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. 
He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. A word of thanks for your ongoing and continued faithfulness um, in giving of offering to the life and ministry uh, that we share here together at Christ the King. You're encouraged to continue uh, to send in your offerings electronically uh, by going to www.ctknashua.org backslash give. Uh, the platform that we use is safe and reliable um, and is a faithful way to give your gifts uh, to God. If you don't feel comfortable, that's fine as well. And we invite you to send in a check made out to CTK uh, to 3 Lutheran Drive, Nashua, New Hampshire, 03063. And again, we give thanks for everyone coming together and lifting their offerings to God. Shall we? Yes! Peace be with peace, you. Peace, 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 peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. Expansive God, you bring diverse voices together to form your church. Open our hearts and unstop our ears to learn from one another that differences might not overshadow our baptismal unity. Lord, receive this thread, holding and sustaining your people, your creation. Providing God, your creation shows us that life comes from death. Renew the places where our land, air, and waterways have been ill for too long. Direct the work of all who care for birds in their habitats. Lord, receive this thread, holding and sustaining your people, your creation. Protecting God, sustain and keep us safe, all who work to defend others across the world. Provide and strengthen organizations dedicated to caring for refugees and migrants while their homeland struggle for peace. Lord, receive this thread, holding and sustaining your people, your creation. Loving God, you promise to be with all who are persecuted for your sake. Guide all who speak your words of justice and console any who are tormented or targeted for being who they are. Lord, receive this thread, holding and sustaining your people, your creation. Merciful God, we pray for our nation and the plague of racism that threatens, destroys, and kills. Root out white supremacy wherever it takes hold. Release its grip on those lured by false promises. Bring to repentance all who continue to benefit from prejudice and hatred, both hidden and revealed. Plant in our hearts and nation a willing spirit open to truth-telling and healing. Lord, receive this thread, holding and sustaining your people, your creation. Compassionate God, you are with us and we are never alone. Bless all fathers and father figures who strive to love and nourish as you do. Comfort all who long to be fathers and all for whom this day is difficult. Lord, receive this thread, holding and sustaining your people, your creation. Caring God, you created us in your image. Help us see your likeness in one another. Open our eyes to see and attend to all who face oppression and suffering. Console, heal, and nourish all in need, including those in need of healing and care. Mike, Glenn, Ginger, Sharon, Christy, Mindy, Tim, Gary, Riley, Jane, Steve, Jennifer, Keegan, Reverend Arlen, Susan, Paul, Bill, Jaden, Jim, Michael, Reverend Tim, Ray, Elaine, Chris, Ryan, Gladys, Marlis, David, Todd, Joanne. Those who are homebound or in care facilities, Joanne. Those who are in hospice care, Carol, those who are in transition, 
Linda. Those who are celebrating, all 2020 graduates as they celebrate accomplishments with their families and friends and look forward to new endeavors. Those who are mourn or are in distress, the family of Fedora de Pamphalus, the Graveline family at the death of their grandson, the family of Don Thompson, the family and friends of Effie Hall, all those who are ill or have lost ones to COVID-19, all those suffering job instabilities and financial uncertainty due to COVID-19, all those who are directly affected and have lost loved ones during the riots and protests. Lord, receive this thread, holding and sustaining your people, your creation. Reigning God, you bless us with guides and caretakers in the faith. As we give thanks for those who have died, increase our care for one another until we walk with them in newness of life. Lord, receive this thread, holding and sustaining your people, your creation. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words, through the love you breathe in us and through us as your people. Amen. And now let us pray together the prayer our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. <clears throat> Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Just a few announcements today coming from inside our sanctuary that we haven't been in for quite some time. We will continue to gather for worship online, uh, not here in this space, at least through August. Um, council in, in our conversations over probably the last five, six weeks um, and at our meeting on Sunday made that decision that we will continue at least through August. We'll gather again as council around this conversation of when to reopen our physical space um, in early September to reassess and discern how we will worship together in the days ahead. Um, there's a lot of questions. There's a lot of things that change every single day. And so as we come to a place where we uh, feel it is safe to uh, reopen this physical space, we will share that. Um, I will be reaching out um, and continuing to work to bring together some medical professionals who are part of our community to help advise and guide uh, the council in that decision. So uh, for the rest of the summer, um, just relax, uh, enjoy time with your family in PJs on the sofa at 9.30 in the morning or at one o'clock in the afternoon, however that works for you. And uh, sometime in, in September, we will come back and share where we are, what our next steps are, and what that looks like. And we ask for your continued prayers and support in that process. Now, next Sunday, Sunday, J June 28th, we will gather online in a Zoom meeting at 2 p.m. for our annual meeting. At this meeting, we'll hear about the life and ministry of our church, we'll elect council members, we'll elect the executive committee, um, and we'll discuss uh, repairing and selling or renting the parsonage. Then from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m., all voting members who were present at the 2 p.m. meeting earlier in the day are invited to come and drive by church and drop off your votes regarding the parsonage. There will be council members on site uh, to ensure that those who are voting were those who were present at the 2 p.m. call. Um, I will likely be there as well on the other side of the parking lot just to smile and wave and exchange a few words as you go. A letter went out uh, earlier this week uh, formally announcing the meeting per our constitutional requirement and a PDF of our annual meeting packet is being made available. It uh, went out in the e-news on Friday and was published both to our Facebook and uh, our Facebook page and our website. Um, if you have any questions, 
if you don't understand the, the pattern we're doing on Sunday, if you're not sure how to get on Zoom, uh, you don't need a computer to get on Zoom. You can pick up your phone. You can dial the number that is provided on the invitation, um, enter in the meeting ID and the password, and you'll be on audio only, but you'll be fully present in the meeting. Um, or you can get online and uh, do a video. Um, some people get online and don't do a video and still do audio. There are multiple ways, but it is accessible for everyone in our community to be a part of this. So if you have any questions, you're not sure how to do it, um, give me a call, um, send me an email, call Tammy, send her an email, and we will help you get there because we need you uh, to be a part of our discernment as a community. As we uh, reflect on our ministry over the last year and look into um, this coming year, and as we make decisions on how we do that. Finally, in light of the ongoing and rising racial tensions, we as God's people uh, are called to be a part of seeking justice for the oppressed. For many of us, that means a hard process of examining and unraveling what we believe, how we live, and what we cover our eyes from seeing or believing. We are opening opportunities here at CTK for this examination, discussion, and action. Sarah Circle and I began um, this Thursday, um, this past Thursday, reading the ELC is 1993. 1993, that's how long ago we, we published this statement, a social statement entitled Freed in Christ, Race, Ethnicity, and Culture. We will continue this and we invite you to join us. There's a link to the document as well as details for the conversation, again in our e-news, on Facebook, and on our website. Additionally, um, our confirmation class has been invited to view the movie The Hate You Give, which was recently made free on most platforms by the director of the movie. Um, and we will be uh, sharing conversation on that in the coming weeks. And we're inviting the congregation to be a part of that as well. Um, and joining us on July 1st for a discussion via Zoom. Um, details on the movie, how you can connect to that, and the discussion on July 4th and how to connect into that, as well as other resources are again available on our website, on our Facebook, and in uh, the e-news. And there's more to come. We will update that and continue that to be growing. This conversation um, has been going on. Uh, it is um, increasing and it will not slow down. So we invite you to be a part of that together as we seek to live into who God has called us to be as God's people. Thanks. Receive the blessing. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else, nor anything else will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus Christ the Savior, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter, bless you now and keep you in eternal life. Amen. Here is him, O God, our Creator, you work every day, with text by Carolyn Winfrey Gillette.
out into the world with all your unraveled strands and know that you are not alone. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.